Hey guys, and welcome to another tip in our digital classroom series. Today, it's about umbrellas, and it's not even raining outside. But make sure that you watch this one, because this might surprise you. So, what is one of the modifiers that you buy literally as soon as you buy a kit? It's an umbrella, right? But what is one of the modifiers that you never use again as soon as you learn your lighting? Yeah, that's the umbrella, right? And I think most of the problems is that we start out with the umbrella. And we look at the umbrella and we go like, okay, now I want to make some pictures, but our knowledge of lighting isn't there yet. So as soon as we have more money, we're going to buy a softbox. And slowly the images become better. So it must be the umbrella, right? And then you get a more expensive softbox. Hey, look, the images get better. It must be the previous softbox, right? Did it ever occur to you that it might not be the light modifier, but it might actually be that you learn a lot more? Think about your first camera. Wasn't it that a terrible camera? But now when you look back at that camera, it actually isn't that bad, right? It's actually a pretty good camera, because now you know how to use it. And that's actually what triggered my attention for the umbrella again. Now, Rogue recently released two new umbrellas in their lighting modifier kit. And because we're the distributor of Rogue, let's make that clear for now in the Benelux, we of course also got some of those umbrellas in and I started like, oh, maybe I should try it again. And I totally fell in love with it, especially for the reason I just told you. In my mind, the umbrella wasn't that interesting because it's what I started with and the images looked like crap. They didn't look nice. No nice soft lighting, shadows on the back, shadows in the nose that was totally terrible but I didn't have proper control yet. So now many years later, I start using the umbrellas with all the knowledge that I now have from my lighting and that changed the world. In this setup, we're gonna use our umbrella as our main light source on our model Felisa. Now we started out with just the umbrella for a very nice soft light quality, as you can see in these images. And of course, Felisa is a great model for these kinds of shots. So I'm using the umbrella slightly from the side, creating a little bit of contrast in my shots. I don't want my shots to be too flat. I always want a little bit of three-dimensionality in my shots. And that's what you do by placing your lights a little bit more from the side to create that nice depth. As you can see here, the light from the umbrella really spreads out nice and evenly. And that's of course because in essence, it's a big softbox, right? If you make your light bigger, it becomes softer. But sometimes you also want something else in your shots. So this is why for the second setup, we're actually using one strobe and that's actually gonna create a lens flare. But when you look really closely, you can see that that strobe isn't near our model. It's literally, we have our umbrella and our model and then we have a little piece of nothingness and there's that one strobe aimed straight at me. So the light from that strobe isn't even hitting the model. The reason I'm using that strobe over there is because this was shot during a workshop. And one of the parts in this workshop is control of lens flare. And lens flare is one of the most beautiful things you can have in your images. But it can also totally destroy your image. That's why nowadays they use a lot of coatings on your lenses to prevent lens flare. But when you master lens flare, it can become so beautiful. So how do you master lens flare? Well, first of all, you have to make sure that the setup is correct. So you have to make sure that a lot of the light is hitting your lens because that will create a lens flare. If that light isn't hitting your lens, yeah, you don't get lens flare. Another part is, of course, using a proper lens. Now, during this workshop, I'm using the TT Artisan 50mm. This is a manual focusable lens, but I have it on a photo deox adapter, so with me, it's now an autofocus lens. It's not fast, but it works great. So why that lens? Well, that lens isn't really well coded for lens flares. Now you might say, ooh, so it's a terrible lens? No, it's a lens with character. It's a great lens for using this. So how do you control lens flare? Do you just lower the output of the strobe? Do you change the angle? Yes, but there's also something else. And one of my students is actually using that technique over here. I call it the Dr. Spock technique. You use your hand on the side of your lens and by creating stuff with your fingers, you can create nice beams of light. I'm gonna show you some images that we actually did this way. And also some images where you see that we're using, a, for example, a blue gel on our model, creating a beautiful beam of light. And the only thing I did was use my hand to the side of the light and just open this. Now, in the images that you see now, you see that we are playing with lens flares. Is it always perfect? Absolutely not in these images, for the very simple reason. It's during a workshop. And let's be honest, working with lens flares, 
it is pretty tricky because every time you change just a little bit, it will totally change the look of your images. So when you want to play with lens flares, the first thing you have to do is make sure that you use a lens that is well, sensible for lens flares. So if you're using a very modern lens, make sure you get something like, for example, this, a KNF concept filter. This is a black diffusion filter. If you put that on your lens, it will really smooth out that lens flare and creates it much, much nicer than your normal lens. Or you can just use a very cheap lens. The disadvantage of very cheap lenses, of course, they're often also prone to chromatic aberration, something you don't want, and, well, they're just not sharp. So my preference is something like the TT Artisan lens or a lens baby or a proper lens with a KNF concept filter. And the other thing that you have to be very careful for is the angle under which you angle your light. Straight in the lens is the best, but it also can be overpowering. And that's where the hand comes in. So normally we use a sun hood over our lens and that takes away a lot of the lens flash that we don't want. But in the case of our hands, we of course have a very big, big soft sun hood, but by changing my fingers, I can let in more or less of that lens flare. So for you guys, experiment with your lens flares and maybe post some images on our social media so we can see what you are doing with your lens flares. Thank you so very much for watching this episode of Digital Classroom. And Digital Classroom is made possible by Roke and BenQ. See you again next time. Bye, guys.